Hi everyone, this is Renee from MCAT Mastery. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about my own MCAT studying process. So a little about myself, I have retook the MCAT twice, both of which were during a very busy time in my life when I had a full-time job working as a medical assistant in a very busy clinical practice. So I think on top of the common strategies and the pitfalls that you see online, where people talk about how to avoid different MCAT mistakes, the most important tip I have gained over time is to really think about how to study smarter and not harder. As you can tell, it was a very busy time in my life and having to fit MCAT studying in my already very busy schedule was very, very challenging. And because of that, I have to do a lot of optimization of my own studying process. So for example, for the content review process, I reflected on what kind of learner I am. Obviously, people recommend you start with the seven book from Kaplan or the Princeton Review material, right? These are kind of the most basic things you get as an MCAT studying person. But thinking back now, perhaps I wouldn't even have made the purchase because I'm not someone who learned from reading textbooks. I have never learned from reading textbooks and I think I probably will never will unless I have to. And I knew that in college, I learned best through watching YouTube videos, through watching other people explain the same questions to me, not in a textbook format, but in a more engaging and interactive way. Thinking back, I really found the most jump in my own understanding when I use the same method. So what I did was I found a summary of people who made about the content online on Reddit and it had, you know, everything that I needed to know in a very simple 200 page document. And I read through that as a quick way to just know what I need to know. And then I watched YouTube videos. I watched different channels like Sci and Simplify, like Leah for Sci, obviously Khan Academy, right? And that was how I was able to both learn efficiently and effectively. And say you're someone who likes to understand things through listening to audiobooks, podcasts, right? There is one on Spotify by a med school coach and they talk about different topics of the high yield concepts of the MCAT process when you're driving to work, when you're commuting to work, right? Download one episode or two and listen to it on your way to work. Maybe you're someone who learned through looking at visual aids or you're a visual learner, right? Then go and utilize PixRise, another resource that is kind of underrated, but I think it's a really good way and really creative way to understand content that are difficult to memorize as well. And if you're someone who learn by reading, then good for you, right? Go ahead and do the reading and do the buy seven books. But there's many ways that you can study and you don't have to utilize the most conventional ways just because everyone else is doing it. And number two, utilize guidance from other people. Look at other people's journey, find the ones that are similar to your own. Find people who have the same starting point Point and the same ending point as you do and really listen to their advice. For me personally, I knew that I did not have English as my major. I did not major something that's humanities related. So when I listened to advice from people about cars, especially who came from a humanities major, I would listen to their advice, but I would keep in mind that it might not work for me because I didn't have the same experience in the mindset that they did. And I didn't have the same training as they did in college. For someone who look at videos about people who struggle with cars badly because of language barriers, because of unfamiliar with the content, I will listen more to their advice because I know that they have probably the same struggles as I do and the same mentality as I did. That's kind of where I came across MCAT Mastery as well through the Cars Reading Passage strategies and how I was talking about Cars is an actual reading test. It's a comprehension and critical analysis test. And that really changed my mindset in terms of thinking about this exam because it became this unreachable goal that was up in the sky, just something that was very tangible and very understandable because I know anyone can understand concept and analyze and passage. Not everyone might be able to maybe comprehend the mid-century modern art, but I can at least utilize different concepts in there to make out the correct answer. Another tip that I have is along the same line of thinking, but it's a little bit different because it talks about goal setting. So I myself am not the most type A kind of person who is very on top of my daily schedule. And when I started studying for the first time, I told myself I would make myself a daily goal and I had a master study plan. I had like a million Excel sheets that I had planned out. However, I quickly realized that because I have never done tasks on a daily basis, 
that was not the rhythm with which I worked at. So it would be really hard to change my old habits and morph myself into a new person who I am not. And I really found a lot of liberation both mentally and academically when I decided to do my task on a weekly basis instead of on a daily basis. Because not every single day is the same amount of workload for me. I don't feel the same every single day. And on days where I have more flexibility, I would do more work. And towards the end of the week, I would do kind of an overview of that week and then realize that I need to do certain things by Sunday. So that's where I would pick up my speed a little bit more. But I do think that we live in a society and on the internet people talk about how they have their own way of studying and most people you see, they have this master plan and then they have tasks they do every single day. Just because it's convention doesn't mean you have to follow it. Think about what works for you and what kind of cycle that you find yourself most comfortable in. I have friends who do things on a daily basis. I have friends who do things on a weekly basis like myself. And I have friends who do things on a bi-weekly, on a, even a monthly basis. And it's not a bad thing. It can actually be a huge advantage because in that way, you're forced to see the bigger picture. You're forced to plan out very far in advance of what you're supposed to do, but then you're also giving yourself a lot of buffer time and flexibility and control over your own schedule so that you're not stressed out about figuring out every single day and being so strict on yourself on a daily basis. That is one more thing that I have to remind myself constantly as well. And I think it'll be a good reminder for you as well if you're someone who is not a type of person who is more of a procrastinator like I am, that there is hope at the end of the night for all of us. So with everything being said, I ended up getting a 522 on my retake which I was really happy about. And I think that the tips that I shared earlier were indispensable to my so-called success in my MCAT setting journey. And I wanted to become a tutor myself because there were people who were in my own shoes that had relatively unique situations who didn't have the resources or the mentality or the guidance to be able to make smart decisions about their studying process that caused a lot of hindrance in their own studying journey. As someone who understands how hard it is mentally, even physically, I want to be the encouraging person for anyone's journey and to be there for someone who is struggling on the process that I was before as well. And I think that as someone who is a procrastinator, as someone who had a full load on their plate, and as someone who didn't have English as their first language, so even the language barrier was not insignificant for me for the entire studying process. I think my own success is a true testament to how anyone can really be able to get a score that they should be happy with on the exam that is grueling and that is very painful, <laughs> quite frankly. So I want to urge everyone who is beginning the process to reflect very truthfully and very honestly about their own process what was productive for their studying, what was unproductive for their studying, and quite frankly, to find ways to make your life easier because there is no use and it's unproductive to try to mold yourself into someone who you're not. Don't look at people on the internet and see the way that they're studying and think that that is the only way that you'll be able to achieve the score you want because there is many ways to do that. You don't have to get up early in the morning. You can be a night owl. That's okay. You know, you don't have to be someone who goes through millions of Anki every day because you might not even learn the best through doing flashcards. So be confident in the ways that you know yourself, but also be very honest with yourself. And if it's not working, change it. If it's working, stick with it. At the end of the day, it is possible to learn this exam. It is possible to put in the work and you will get a score that you're happy with on this exam. And there is hope at the end of the tunnel for all of us. So thank you so much.